When you hear the word orphanage, what comes to mind? A refuge for children whose parents have died tragic deaths? If you had the chance to look deeper, to look through the eyes of an orphan, your perception of that word may change. This year, I chose to spend five and a half months living alongside the 75 desperate children of an orphanage in Haiti. I experienced the unseen struggles these children endure every day. And my perception of the word orphanage, as well as the word orphan, have changed completely. I've never seen anything more frightening than Haiti's orphanage system. The nonprofit orphanage is a dangerous spider that thrives in impoverished countries. It preys on the nation's most vulnerable families who feel trapped in the web of poverty. These families are desperate to feed, clothe, and educate their children, but they can't afford it. So when a spider walks by and claims it can take that child to a place with more opportunity, parents are eager to believe it's true. They give up their child. But this child abandonment places children directly in the mouth of the spider. Right now, thousands of children in Haiti are being beaten, burned, left in the streets. They're used as slaves, sold, and their parents have no idea. The orphanage I lived in had 75 children. All but one of these children have living families. Yet in the orphanage, there wasn't a single paid staff to look after them. The older girls were responsible for all the younger children. So what do you think? Oh, sorry. This orphanage was run by a single Haitian woman. Let's call her the spider. This spider, as I was in the room next door, beat Joalit with a piece of metal because the toddler had wet the bed. Every night, Joalit woke up crying, frozen next to me. She was terrified to go pee. This tent was the children's bedroom. I slept on the ground with the 40 youngest children. The beds you see here were shared by 14 teenage girls. Only half of these beds have mattresses. The others are wire mesh. Yet 17 of my boys, including Jameson, slept outside under a picnic table. These boys had nothing to sleep on but a piece of cardboard on the mud and no protection from Haiti's rainstorms. These boys had no blankets, no jackets, not even socks. And if anyone gave these to them, the spider took them away. The same picnic table these boys slept under is where they ate their daily meal. One to two plates of rice every single day for the last six years is all these children have eaten. They're severely malnourished. These children have no access to sanitation, no hygiene, no hand washing, but when they're sick or injured, they don't get medical care. Jigemai, for example, stop breathing. When her asthma attack started, this child was left in the corner by herself for hours. And as I carried her unconscious body out of the orphanage, running to a hospital, the spider stopped me. Shigermai's hair isn't braided, she said. She's not wearing socks. This spider cared more about her own reputation than about Shigermai's life. I chose to ignore that spider got on a motorcycle and ran to the next medical clinic. Jigermai was so weak she couldn't hold up her own hand. 
With an oxygen mask and steroids, Jigermai was hospitalized for two weeks before her body had the strength to breathe on its own. So what do you think the word orphanage means to these children? For some of them, it no longer means home. Mama no longer means the woman who beats them every day. What changed? My children made a choice. Kenley chose to stop hitting his siblings. Kylene chose to trust and play with other children, though she'd isolated herself her entire life. Mika chose to walk up to the woman who'd abused her and used her as a slave for the last seven years and walk away. For the last six months, Mika's been living with her mother, her father, and her five brothers. She goes to school every day. She has her own bicycle, her own clothes, her own family. Mika has an identity. She made that choice. And so did Danielle, so did Judlin, Gawensha, Krista, many other children made a choice. So how did I reunite orphans in rural Haiti with their long-lost families? I didn't. My children chose to call their parents. Mothers trekked all the way across Haiti to rescue their sons and daughters. All I did was show my children that they're a part of the world outside of that orphanage. All I did was show them they have a choice. And so do you. You have a choice. Look deeper. Look outside the life you isolate as your own and see that you are connected to the world outside. Everywhere you go, you'll see suffering. But that only means that everywhere you go, you'll have the opportunity to make a difference. Redefine your reality by choosing to see these opportunities and redefine progress by choosing to take them. If you think you are too young and inexperienced to make a difference, if you think you lack the skills or finances to impact another being, Think again. When Jigermai stopped breathing, she needed someone to notice, someone to act. I picked her up, told her to, stop, to keep breathing, and carried her to the nearest medical clinic. That's all I did. I held her in my lap and made sure her oxygen mask didn't fall off. Anyone could do that. But if I had chosen, not to interfere, if I had hesitated, Jigermai wouldn't be breathing right now. I chose to act. So how would you choose to make a difference if you had no fear and no excuses?